Zul is coming to meet me very soon. Today on the channel, we're gonna get to know global superstar singer songwriter Zochi. Um, shout out to Sax Music, you know, yeah. it's been awesome. Two years now on the board, and um, two years already. Oh, I listened to the project. I listened to the project. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate it. So, who is the best one? Oh, we go, we go right into it. Right into it. Because you think it's hard, like, to search for things when you don't know what you're searching for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or do you all, oh, are people just, I would just be lazy. I don't know. I mean, I would say it could be both. Yeah. Yeah, it could be both. Um, I know, like, I had someone message me when I released my EP and they were asking, like, how do I send my music to radio? You know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, um, go on Sax Music website. There's a bunch of radio stations on there. You can find the one that best suits you and just try your luck, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the CJTR, like if you're in Regina, if you're in the community, you, it's your due diligence to go out and search for what are the music radio stations that work. But yeah, that best suit our work. Like I even came to you asking if you ever had like a <clears throat> radio. Yeah. If you ever had like a radio station, right? So yeah, so it's just going out there and finding that information because it's out there for us. So I'm listening to Zochi's EP and I just have so many questions on YouTube music by the way like a good person the rest of you Spotify and the rest you guys are morally and I don't even want to say it but Zochi's EP gave me so many questions like is she heartbroken what's going on is she in love but the first one was <laughs> we're not dropping names though we can't drop names <laughs> because right after that she went into heartbreak so I'm like is she in love is she heartbroken did she cheat okay. What's going on? <laughs> Why is she mad? I thought she was in love with you. Now she's angry. She's sad in front of the car. <laughs> just to just to her, not talking again. What is going on? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um. Okay. Well, African Man Fairy Tale, which is the title of my EP. It's a story about love and you know the the process of it. Um, with Can I being where you meet the person. Which is the track one, and uh, Colombia is just games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Holy Again is the most wholesome song on there. Mm. Um, but yeah, first love. First love is exactly what it is, you know. First love is not. It's, it doesn't always end in a happy way, but it, it's something that you never forget, you know. Which is kind of sad because I wish I could. So you have mostly forgotten it till now. I don't think I ever forget though. I think I know, I'm good with that. I just have to learn how to. Don't you think like we're bringing it into like new relationships? New relationships. Yes. Yeah. Now you build like another new, new person. I'm not thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think more so like it's gonna be a reminder of what to. Like, if I see that same behavior in somebody new, mm. then I'm done. What's up if, like, if I, I don't do something that I did now, but because, like, something like that happened to you before, you will not, like, over it and, you oh. know, over it type. Yeah. A red flag would be not communicating. If we're not able to talk about what the problem is or saying, oh, that's just vibe. Man, f the vibe. Why are you trying to vibe? Excuse my language. I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to just vibe because I've no, I've seen what that yeah, does. Yeah, don't vibe it. No, I, I mean, what I want to. I want to vibe, but I just want to like vibe with purpose. My thing is on the album, man. Eh? Is that an album or an EP? First of all, because it's, it's an eight an EP. songs. An EP of eight songs. That's crazy. You know, it's not even eight. Yeah, it's eight, eight songs. It's, I'm like, it's a contemporary EP. Four, six. You I said no. I don't know. Like, I'm like, I have some. I, I have a lot to say. I'm gonna say and. Um, I'm gonna say right now, first time uh, we're dropping the deluxe as well, so there's gonna be three new songs. Let's talk a little bit about your bi um, you know, yeah. bio, and then you get yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Tell us about when you come, the whole give us the whole team. I mean, for one, I didn't start doing music until I moved here, and uh, I moved to Canada in 2000. Nigeria? 
Nope. I never oh. put out a song. No. Is this a safe space? Is Pride Month? Hell is it? It's a safe space. Happy Pride Month, my people. Period. If you're I'm watching this, LGBTQ plus IA2S, everybody. Um, yeah, I, I never put out music in Nigeria because I feel like when I was in Nigeria, I was still very young. I um, in high school. I a lot of my music is centered around love. And, it's, and I, when I'm singing about love, obviously, like, everybody is singing about love interests. Like, what are you interested in, right? So I think I was still struggling with a lot of that in Nigeria. It never, like, I used to write music in the room, but it was never, oh, let me go to the studio. I never went to a studio. I never knew how to record on the computer, you know? I was just writing music manually. And um, press, play, pause, write you know just vibing like that so coming over here i literally have no knowledge about industry you know all i knew is okay i'm in a place that now allows me to be free hmm. that's how you felt coming here yeah the place that now allows me to be free that's yeah okay. allows me to be free and uh, explore what it feels like to be free and one of the the most <laughs> the biggest thing about not being free and being thrown into freedom is you have to figure out how to free yourself you know like you might be welcomed in a space but if you've spent majority of your life at the time feeling like you're not welcome you're gonna have to instead of you know saying oh i'm welcome like let me just get right to it it's overwhelming you have to unlearn a lot of stuff yeah. And learn music. You literally have to unlearn bondage and learn freedom. Literally, that was what that was my journey, and it took me five years to do that. Five years. It took me five years to do that. Um, do you feel like you're still learning? I don't know what you mean right now. I don't do you feel like you got into a point where you actually finally feel comfortable. Yeah, I've, I've, I've grown so much, you know. I've grown so much, and I think I'm at a space where I don't. I'm I'm very free, so free. Like my music is like the freest way for me to express myself right now. I think part of my passion still lies in just thinking about, like when I think back on them, like what would have happened if I never knew what freedom felt like? Like who would I have been? Like what would I have become of my dreams? And so I'm really passionate about like this thing called freedom and just being like a voice for the people that are still in that space that I was at when I first came. I never really believed that that stuff was real. Like I never, I was just a part of the process. And it's funny because they always call me to read the Bible. Oh, no, we like the way you read me. I'm just like, I'm reading the Bible and I'm just like, man. I don't know what this stuff is. Like, <laughs> it's just another word. Literally. You know, so moving to Canada and having that, whoa, I'm overwhelmed. Whoa, okay, I've been gay my whole life. And now I'm in Canada and it's like, how do I, how do I, how do I allow myself to be gay? To the point where I feel I don't need to hide it no more. And not knowing God, I couldn't figure it out. I was depressed. Five years of depression, Five years of overeating, five years of suicide thoughts, five years of secret relationships and just the worst part of my life. And then until 2018 when I found God, you know. So now I would say like the real change actually for me started after I found God, after I confessed to God who I was, what I've been, all of my struggles. The Bible you call it your sins. And I think not to be um you know what's the word? Not to scare anybody, but when when I say confess your sins, it's pretty much like talk tell God about the things that you did when you thought he wasn't looking. Cause your heart thinks God's not looking, so you do whatever, but he saw you. So to him it's like, Oh, you you would play hide and seek and you knew I was there. So it's like Tell me about those days, right? So when I told God about who I was and I had that first um, um, encounter in prayer with the Holy Spirit and just getting the wisdom now to read the Bible and actually understand what it says and actually learn how to pray for what I need to pray about 
and having God just reveal to me in a very intimate process what his word is saying. And he's following up with good works, like in those, like with things that are happening in my life. What you are not doing is this. What you doing is this. Like, you know? So yeah, so it was just, um, what was it? Going back to that, it's like, yeah, the, the thing about knowing myself and, and, and walking confidently in my sexuality came because I prioritized God first. And I know there's so many people out there who do it, like, they're very confident. At least from what I can see, I know that, but this is just like my personal story, right? He revealed to me that the only sin that can cast a person to condemnation is unbelief. That's deep. This, this is what I've been trying to get at. Because I'm like, so sure you've been reading the Bible. So how are you interpreting yeah. this stuff in the it's Bible not, that gives you freedom? It's nothing else that has to do with your body or how you think or how you approach situations. Well, we're very flawed. But it's, where's your heart at? What do you believe? You believe in Jesus? You're fine. Any mistake you make, rest assured God can use it to, for good. We can use the evil for good Makes at all any point. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the mindset that he put me at. And it's like, okay, now moving on to love. I, we've been taught, like as a kid, I was taught like right from Nigeria, like, oh yeah, man and man, you're going straight to hell. I used to believe I was going to hell. Like I literally told myself, like, if I'm going to hell, so what the fuck is the point? Like, why would I even try? I already know where I'm going to end up, so I'll just do whatever I need to do. But I think a lot of that came from the false teaching and the misinterpretation of the Bible when it comes to marriage and the union. Again, you refer to the most important union is the bride and the church, right? Jesus and the church. Yeah. And who's the bride? We know it's Jesus. Who's the church? The believers. Now, very interesting, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 31. Um, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31 is where Paul speaks about marriage, right? And this is just quick, 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 quick snack. Quick, 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 Bible snack. Show it out. Go ahead. That one, man. Yeah, I love her. Quick, 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 yeah, but, um, yeah, so when Paul, and it's so interesting that God chose a man who would be termed asexual in today's terms to write about the most holy union, which is marriage. Paul never got married. I admire that man. He never had no sexual I cannot do it, but I do admire him. So it's so like, why would God pick somebody like that to write about the marriage? And he says literally, again, the um the mystery is the the union between the bride and the church. And he gives his own personal advice about marriage, like don't marry if it's better if you're not if you can't marry. So now down to like what? And he says if you're lost enough to somebody, go marry. Mm -hmm. You love that person, go marry. So the thing about belief and then just being pure and being holy and having good conscience before God, if I'm lusting over a woman is it morally correct for me to go marry a man knowing that I'm lost and over a woman? Be just. Like, let us judge that situation. If the Bible says you must send, and God... That's the mind that's a burden. Yeah. yeah. And if you think, oh, by your understanding, I'm going to go marry a man because that's what we're told. Man must marry a woman, woman must marry a man. Because the man is supposed to satisfy is sexual desire. That's what it's difficult. I mean, take up, take one man, so that that one man can satisfy yeah. sexual desire. Yeah. It's like, but that's not, that's not the, how it that's works. Not, so that's not how it works. So your, your lust is somewhere else. Your, your desire is with a woman. Mm. So if you go with a man, you're playing with the, you're playing chess. Yeah. Cause now you're gonna be trying in your understanding, mm. leaning on your understanding, and instead of just letting it go with God, Trying to get over that much. You're never going to get over the loss. And I'm sorry. And it's funny because now I have to deal with that. Because I've been with women that... I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm, I'm just being honest. No, I'm down with women. Jesus. This is what I'm shouting. <laughs> <laughs> On the EP, you're saying you don't want to vibe now, but on the EP, you sounded very much like a player. 
You sound like you just break hearts for a living. I mean, I've I've had my fair share. I'm not I'm not a saint. Like I'm not looking <laughs> to settle down anytime soon. I just want. I feel like I just, I just yeah, like I just want somebody that says, "Hey, I want to vibe with you." But I hear like, No, I'm evil. Why is he giving very much your body? You, you just said <laughs> you just said you don't want to vibe. <laughs> so, no, you're saying you don't want to set Yo, it down I'm, anytime I'm soon. I'm trying to figure it out, but it's like. So what is Can you understand? No. <laughs> <laughs> like if I, I want to figure it out. I'll give you my heart, right? Because I can't, I can't be with more than one person at the same time. Mm. So, so you're figuring out with one person. Yes, and like there's just, like loyalty and just like boundaries. Like that was something that I was lacking in my previous relationship. Not really having boundaries and that like maybe boundaries, you know? What kind of boundaries? Just knowing like. When you need your alone time, okay, not so, like cheating or anything. I thought that was obvious, but apparently, it's yeah, that's apparently that's not. <laughs> 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 that's I didn't even mean it though. <laughs> that you want that you've been through this time. Yo, I don't know. Love has dealt with me, but I love love so much. I'm never I keep going back. I'm never gonna stop. Like, I just feel like, man. I'm I'm not learning shit like bro I'm just I mean, getting at least we get good songs maybe after deluxe we see deluxe deluxe <laughs> so I'm not even angry with it man I'm just yeah I love it so me like it's so me shaking man but I feel like I also I'm strong enough for the scene like I've done wrong too like I'm not gonna pose myself as a saint if my ex ever comes across this video like I know what I did. And I take responsibility. I'm like, please don't do it in the comment section. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm happy and I'm learning again what the should look like and what the should look like. So I guess I'm talking to somebody. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have to apologize. That's just a play. Babe, that's just a play of me. You know that. Oh my. <laughs> she said you know that. That's you people already know that. You don't have the opportunity to know it clearly. Saskatchewan tapping, um, black people tapping, LGBTQ tapping, tap University of Regina tapping. Tap um, who else is a? Uh, if you got a phone, if you tapping. Tap <laughs> 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 